Hey guys, welcome to another video. And in this video, I will be discussing span. And I will be answering the question, what is the span of a given vector set? So we write that like this, the span of a vector set. And we define the span of a vector set as equal to all of the linear combinations of the vectors within the set. So I can write that as C1V1 times, or plus C2V2 plus C3V3, and so on and so on, where these C coefficients just represent scalars. So really what this equation means is that the span is the set containing all of the linear combinations of any of these vectors. So I can pick any multiple of any vector and add it to any multiple of any number of other vectors and what I get is the span of that vector set. So this may seem like an abstract topic right now but let's consider some examples and it will make a lot more sense. So let's consider this xy plot and let's say that we have the vector v1 and we want to find the span of this vector. So the span of the set containing just v1 and like we defined before, it is equal to the linear combinations of this vector. So we can write that as any multiple of v1. So now let's talk about what this actually means. What does it mean to have any multiple of a vector? Well, what this means is I can take any number and multiply it by v1, and that vector is in the set. For example, if I multiply v1 by 1 half, then this vector is in the set. Or if I multiply it by 2, then this guy's in the set. Or what about negative one? Then I have this guy. And you can see that I can pick any number, negative or positive, or any fraction. So if the span is any linear combination of the vector, and C can be anything, well, that makes the span of a single vector equal to the entire line in which it points on, all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we say that the span of a single vector is the entire line in which it lies on. So let's consider another example. Instead of having only one vector, let's say that we have two vectors. We have v1 right here, and we've got v2 pointing down here. And we want to find the span of this vector set containing v1 and v2. And just like before, we define it as all of the linear combinations of v1 and v2. So we write that out like that, where c1 and c2 can be anything now. So let's go ahead and draw the span of these two vectors. Well, the span of one vector is just anything along its line. So the span of v1 is this entire line. And the span of v2 is anything along this line. So what about the span of these two vectors together? Well, let's think about that. If we can go anywhere along v1 by linear combinations of just v1, we can come anywhere along here. And we also can add any combination of v2. That means that any point along the line that v1 lies on, we can go anywhere along v2. For example, this point right here could possibly be negative 1 times v1 plus negative 1 times v2. And we can justify that for really any point that lies in this plane. So if I only stop down to here, and then I can go anywhere along v2, it would be this line. And we can just continue this all the way to infinity. So what this actually is, is this is a plane. We'll draw this as a plane extending out into infinity in all directions. So the span of two vectors is a plane and in this case we can see that we can reach any point in this xy plane therefore we say that the span of these two vectors is equal to r2 in this case where r2 represents the entire two-dimensional space. So let's consider another example in three dimensions. And let's say that we have v1 that points along the x-axis. And we have v2, which comes out in the y direction and 
in the z direction. And we'll say v2 is this vector right here that is in the yz plane. And we want to find the span of these two vectors. And like we did before, we said that this was a plane which contained all of the linear combinations of these two vectors. So let's go ahead and draw out the plane that, the, that these two vectors span. So we have this entire line spanned by V1, and then we have this entire line spanned by V2. So we can kind of see what's going on here. We can fit a plane that's oriented with these two vectors and intersects the origin right here. So if you, if you use your imagination a little bit, you can see that the plane is this guy right here that's kind of at an angle from the origin. So it's tilted in a way that makes it lined up with these two vectors and it's intersecting through the whole entire x-axis right here. Kind of hard to see it with my drawing but you guys get the idea. So it's this plane right here. So we can say that the span of this vector set is this plane which is a two-dimensional plane, but it, it exists in R3. Now let's come back to our 2D example, but instead of only having V1 and V2, let's say that we also have a V3. And now we want to find the span of the set containing V1, V2, and V3. So we can write that as the set containing all of the linear combinations of v1, v2, and v3, where c1, c2, and c3 can be anything. And we've already said before that the span of just these two vectors is equal to all of r2. So if we throw in this third vector, v3, how does that affect our answer? Well, it actually doesn't. We can still say that the span of these three vectors is equal to R2. Even though we've added an extra vector, V3, the span of this vector set is still R2. And that is because V3 is linearly dependent with V1 and V2. Recall from the previous video when I said that the max number of linearly independent vectors in Rn is n. And we know that V1 and V2 are linearly independent because they aren't on the same line. So that means that V3 must be linearly dependent with V1 and V2. So by definition, that means we can write V3 as a combination of the multiples of V1 and V2. Where this is just the definition of linear dependence. So if I bring this back up here, then adding multiples of C3, V3 is redundant information because this information is already contained in this information by this equation. So I can reduce the span of this vector set by getting rid of V3. So we can redefine span as all of the linear combinations of just the linearly independent set because vectors that are linearly dependent aren't even adding any new information. So this brings me to another fact that I want to write down that is important, and that is that in linearly independent vectors in Rn span all of Rn. Now what if our vectors are higher dimensions? Like in this case, we have four dimensional vectors. How do we draw that out? Or how do we picture that? Well, it, it's actually a lot harder to picture and, and really there's not a way that we can draw this out. So instead what we do is for higher dimension vectors or in situations that is just not reasonable to plot out, we just leave it in this form. But the important thing to recognize is that the span of these three four dimensional vectors contains all of the linear combinations. Any point that can be reached or accessed via these three vectors is within the span 
of this set. So in the next video, we're going to start dealing with the columns of a matrix, and we're going to consider the span of the columns of the matrix. And now that we understand what span is, we're going to have a better intuition on the possible solution space associated with a matrix equation. And we'll talk about that more in uh, the later videos. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later.